from disembodied sounds to objects moving on their own. These are three bone-chilling and allegedly true poltergeist encounters. To help me with today's video, I'm joined by the creative mind behind the film The Devil Soon Come. I'll link her contact information in the video description below. I'm Fearcrawler. Welcome to the video. While I was in college, I lived in a college apartment for one year. I don't think it was a very old apartment building, and if anyone had ever died there, I was certainly unaware. I had three roommates, two of whom had lived there the previous year. The girl in the bedroom right next to mine moved in at the same time I did. Once we moved in, some strange things started happening. The other two roommates had said that nothing like this had ever happened before. It started with the TV in the living room. The four of us were sitting on the couch watching TV. The remote was sitting under the table that the TV was on, upside down. The back was off the remote so we could see that there were no batteries in it. The volume on the TV was a little too low, and I commented on it, asking anyone to turn it up. Of course we were all too lazy to do it, so we just sat there. However, the volume bar on the TV started to go up, and remarkably stopped at a comfortable volume. We were all pretty spooked, but it didn't scare us too much. After some discussion, we had decided that if our apartment was haunted, it was probably haunted by either a kind spirit, or one with a sense of humor. After that, I started hearing strange noises at night. Not like noises you would expect to hear in a college apartment complex, but very mechanical ticking noises. The part that really got me though, only happened one night in my bedroom. I was in bed in the dark trying to get to sleep, when I heard a loud thud on the wall behind my head. Immediately after that, the following things happened in a perfect clockwise circular pattern around my room. The mirrored door on my closet shook. Right after it shook, my bedroom doorknob, just to the right of it, began turning rapidly. That stopped, and my bathroom doorknob, just to the right of my room door, turned rapidly. After that, my VCR, which was to the right of my bathroom, turned on, and then off by itself. The window to the right of the VCR then began to shake. Then the thud behind me again. This circle went around three times, and then stopped. I had no idea what was going on, and I had absolutely no explanation as to what was making the noises. Nobody else had any experiences in their bedrooms, and I didn't have any more after that but the TV in the living room was still affected. I've long moved out since then, but I still think it was an interesting story. Also, I was interested in theories on what, or who, was in our apartment. As most stories start out, on a dark and stormy night, I will bypass the horror formalities and just tell you exactly what happened. I had been living in Memphis, Tennessee for over a year, and at this time, I was living with a good friend of mine named Kari in an apartment complex in East Memphis. We got along fine and greatly enjoyed living together, but due to the scorn of her local bishop, she was told that one of us had to move. Seeing as how she had more furniture than I did, I decided to go and let her stay in the apartment. Mid-September, I began looking for an apartment in the Midtown area. Midtown is the artsy part of town where the bohemian wannabes and young happy art students live. Long story short, I found an apartment on the top floor of the Alta Vista complex on Poplar and Clark that fit right into my price range. I moved out to the East Memphis apartment and settled into my new place. This was my first time living completely alone. I had always had a roommate before and I didn't know how I would handle the situation. But as luck would have it, after a few weeks, I started getting comfortable with my new surroundings and started going out at night in the neighborhood to the local bars and clubs. 
Midtown life seemed to agree with me. I had made several new friends that came over frequently, so I spent very little time alone. However, the night everything started, no one but myself would be witness to it. It all began on a Saturday in October. I was lying on the couch watching television with my dog Cameron. He was a beautiful black lab I had adopted shortly after moving into Alta Vista. We were relaxing on the couch when I began to hear scratching inside the walls. This building was built in 1912 and although I had never seen any, I knew it had to play host to a variety of bugs and mice. I naturally assumed that's where the noises came from. And I would have been satisfied with that theory if the situation had not suddenly exploded as it did. Around 11 p.m., I decided it was time for a shower before I proceeded with the evening's activities. I went to the bathroom, started the water running, removed my clothes, and stepped inside the tub. That's when the scratching in the wall stopped and something started banging at the front door. I bolted from the tub and wrapped myself in a towel as I walked into the living room. Who is it? I called, but no one returned with an answer. Suddenly, in front of my eyes, the banging started again. It almost took my breath away. Whoever was on the other side of that door was banging with such force that it was shaking the door inside its frame. It was obvious that whoever was on the outside wanted in, and I was not about to give them permission. Who is it? I yelled over and over. I am not opening the door until you tell me who you are. And then the banging stopped. See? Seeing as how I lived on the third floor of the apartment building, I looked out the window at the courtyard to see who was coming out of the stairwell. I waited for several minutes before realizing that whoever it was stayed in the hall. They did not leave. I jerked the door open and looked down the stairs. Still, no one. There was nobody in the stairwell at all. How strange. I closed the door and went back inside and called my mom to tell her what had happened. And for the rest of the night, everything stayed quiet. However, every other night after that was interrupted with loud pounding at the door. This was something I complained about frequently to the office, but being unable to identify the guilty person, my complaints went seemingly unnoticed. Fast forward to late October. By this time, the pounding was a frequent occurrence, being that it happened almost every night, but the only difference was now I had friends who had witnessed it firsthand. One night, before the situation worsened, I happened to be in the bathroom again, brushing my teeth, when the knock started. I turned and looked down the hallway and could see the door being beaten so roughly that it looked as if it were about to come down from its frame. It had never been this bad before. It was always loud, don't get me wrong, but never to this point of pounding and shaking. I walked down the hallway toward the front room when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a plaster figure that I had hung beside my bedroom door fly from the spot it was hanging and it hit the wall opposite it. I was stunned. I could not move. I could not believe what had just happened. It came off the wall with such force that it broke a few of the pieces off when it hit the wall across from it. And again, just as before, the banging stopped. My first instinct was, get out, move, find a new place. But I was under a six-month lease, 
and would be charged a fine. Plus, they would keep my deposit. And I planned on getting that money back one day, so I stayed. After October passed, I went to the supermarket to pick up some pumpkins for decorations in honor of Thanksgiving. I bought five of the big, perfect gourds and lined them up on the top of my china cabinets. I went home for Thanksgiving. Cameron and I piled into the car and took off to Mama's house for the holiday. It was great. No banging, no pounding, or flying objects. I came back home on a Monday. I came into the apartment and threw my bag down. I went down the hallway to the bathroom to use the restroom. After I finished, I emerged out of the bathroom and discovered that I had left my kitchen door shut. I turned the knob and pushed. Something was behind the door. I pushed again and something was definitely on the other side of the door, blocking me from opening it. I pushed hard and got it open. I looked behind the door and discovered one of the pumpkins that I had placed on my china cabinets had been hurled at the back of the door. You could see where it had hit, where the guts had splashed out, and where it slid down onto the floor. I panicked as I looked around the room. I saw that all my pumpkins were lying in the floor. How could this happen? No one had a key. There was no signs of forced entry. I felt like I was losing my mind. Well, sad to say, after this huge ordeal, I did wind up breaking my lease and letting them keep my deposit. I never slept in that apartment again. I was home alone ready to go to school one morning. I was left by myself because my mom had gone to work, and my brother was already at his school. Before I get in my shower, I always turn on the TV, just so I could hear noise, because I never really liked silence. As I turned on the TV, I noticed it was on a show that I didn't care for. The show was 16 and it was on Nickelodeon. I turned off the TV and decided to just take my shower. About 20 minutes later, I got out and noticed my TV was now on, and it was on the news, talking about a murderer under a girl's bed. I suddenly felt a cold breeze down my spine and I quickly got dressed and ran off to the bus stop. It doesn't quite stop there though. Later that night, I was getting ready to go to bed. It was around 9.30 p.m. I was walking up the stairs and we had a stairway in our new house, and as I hid above the stairway, I heard a pounding. It didn't freak me out that much, but then I began to hear other noises, such as whispering. I was left alone that night since my mom and brother had gone to a concert, and I walked downstairs for food. I knew I left my door closed so my cats wouldn't escape out of my room. I came back up and my door was open. I never leave my door open because my cats would get out and claw at the furniture. I'm not sure what to think now, and it still even freaks me out. Hopefully it's not just my mind playing tricks on me because that rarely happens. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Again, I want to thank my special guest, The Devil Soon Come, for joining me for today's video. Until next time, take care, be safe, and stay scared.